Michael Palmisano, back again, doing another Guitar Teacher Reacts. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that subscribed in the past couple days um, since we launched the Grateful Dead Rhythm Guitar Workshop, or Rhythm Section Workshop, rather. Um, just a huge influx of people, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you uh, for jumping in and being a part of the community. So I'm on my page here, uh, and Bo Roberts hits me with a little tab benoit. These Arms of Mine says, great cover of one of my favorite songs from the great Otis Redding. He said, the tone, the organ, everything's working here. Nobody does it like Otis, but this guy has a great sound. Any input on the solos and little flourishes? Dude, my pleasure. Bo, thank you so much for being a student and subscribing over at Guitargate. This is for you, brother. Oh, he just, <laughs> I love that. You ask him what key, it looks like he just said, hey. Hey. These arms of mine They're lonely Five. Four. Alone. songs of mine they are burning he's got to check it all are burning from wanting all right so real quick little flourishes since you asked so he's he's tending to favor this A major right here. Now again, this is a six-eight slow ballad, right? Or twelve, however you want to feel. It's just triplets, you know, triple, triple, right? And so basically, you're gonna have you got that, or one person doing the, and the drummer's doing that on the hi hat or the ride. So a couple things I pick up real quick is he's favoring this triad for A. And then there's this half step walk up to the five, right, which is E major. But then he jumps up to first inversion each time. And then when it goes to the four chord, chromatic walk down, staying in first inversion. So D major, D over F sharp, D major, D over F sharp. That's what first inversion means. It means the third is in the bass. And then he goes back to A. And then where you would think a turnaround would be where you go to the five, he keeps it on the A but does this, just moves his third finger over each time. You can see he's on it now to kind of hit that fifth, but he's still staying on the one there. Let's keep going. And if you oh yeah. Oh, well, let them, let them hold you. Oh, how grateful. I love that move so damn much. Watch it again. Watch it again. So you got A major. You're going to walk up from the fifth. Add an F. F sharp. G. And then, jumping up here to this D major. Right, this D over F sharp like this. So this is a this is like a reverse turnaround to the four. Now you could just grab it just like that. What a cool thing. Oh, Up to the five. God his voice sounds so good. These arms of mine Love that snare too They are yearning A little bass run They're yearning From haunting Yeah they are Thank you. 
Perfect amount of room. Easing into it, baby. Just easing into it. The drummer is so confident. He's so on the groove. Let me just explain why this works real quick. So it just occurred to me that, that I just kind of nerded out and didn't explain why this, why you can play all this, these notes that you know are out of key to get to your four. So you're on A, and you know you're going to your four chord, which is D. So A is the fifth of D major, right? So basically what we're trying to do is we're gonna chromatically increase our fifth in A which is the note E, until it becomes that flat seven, which is the note G, a whole step below A. So when you get G, A, and C sharp, you get A7. What does A7 want to do? Well, the third of A7, C sharp, this little tritone thing wants to go up to D, and this G wants to go down to F sharp. A7 wants to resolve five to one. So this is just like a backwards turnaround to create, to make A a functioning dominant chord to that four, which is D. That's why it works. Awesome. Not something I use enough, frankly. A major. Did something really cool here. So he comes in, root, here's your, oh, get that out of there. You're nine, right? So he's bending up. Now, a lot of times in a blues, you're thinking, again, one, four, five, and they're all dominant seventh chords. And you are just assuming that, that you're going to have a flat seven. But because the chord change goes to the five first, right? It's like a quick change to the five. It's, it's A to E right away. He doesn't play that G. He goes the. He does that little trill on G sharp, right? Why? Why? Because it's the third of E. It's the third of your five chord. Remember it for life. Your major seventh is the third of your five. You always want to know how to spell the five because it's the strongest pull in diatonic harmony. So knowing that the seventh is the third of your five. The ninth is the fifth of your five. That's that's little target notes. So if you watch it again, it might pass you by. Here's the five. You hear it? Yeah. 
That's it right there. What a great tone. So like right there, that, 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 that. Why does that work? Again, quick change to the five. What did I just say? The nine's the fifth of your five? If you're an A, what's the nine? B, right? What's B? The fifth of E, the fifth of your five. I'm telling you, things sound good for a reason. Put the words to it so you can use it anywhere, anytime. He just did it again. So he did this little walk down. In key of A major, right? This is just going to be basically second version. You could look at it as a piece of C sharp minor, but really it's the fifth and major third of A. Walking down diatonically, A. And then he does the same thing here in this position, pattern four, if you're hip to the cage system, um, that he does up here in pattern one, which is, Hits that G sharp as he makes his way down. Did you catch it? Yeah, okay, so the guy gets it. You're, you're, you're painting a picture, and you want people to follow you on the journey. So that means you have to be simple. You got to let it sear. You got to have like a singing melody, and you got to repeat things that you introduce in different ways, right? So that when people in the audience, even that are non-musicians, hear it, even if they don't know what they're hearing, they're like, oh, yeah. I recognize that. I'm still with you here. I'm still with you. I haven't, I'm not focusing on my beer, right? Like, you have my attention. So coming in, major here, that, that, I'm doing that, all that stuff, same thing here. Major, and then jumping right up. That five, six, one. And then choosing to do a big major bend again on the nine. When it goes to the five, same way you did it here. Focusing on that nine, fifth of your five chord. Then that little run. But then I think at the very end there, he does do a little. Just a little minor to blues it up to get out of there. And that same double stop he introduced to get down. Just love this change so much. <laughs> what a great drop. I knew it was coming, I just didn't know where. He's taking signaling. Listen, listen to the duration of the hi-hat. I preach this on the channel all the time. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, we go deep. We go nerdy. Everybody concentrates so much on where to come in, where the, the beat is, where the hit is. Not as much in how long the duration should be, right? And whether that note should be a full round expression for the entire duration or whether it should shh, right? In no, in no place is it more on display than the hi-hat, which is why 
I pointed out constantly because the hi hat really is the keeper of the groove because you get to you get to subdivide in like a sizzle, right? It's not like a right. It it's in like a so you can you can really hear it. Little things like this, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. He puts his hand up. You know the bass player's <laughs> cleaning the sweat out of his eyebrow with his uh, actual bass. Love that I stopped it here. But listen to the to the attack of the hi hat, how it shimmers open and close, and you can hear the beat approaching, with like like it, it's rapidly approaching as the shimmer of the hi hat gets closer. That is how you hit at the same time and you make these things pop. That's how you do it. One more time, listen for it. And look, look at the bass player. Look how much the bass player loves it. He looks at the drum and he goes, hmm, they have a little hi-hat drop you had there. That's the real stuff. How grateful I'll be. Love that little move. That, 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 that. It. Making it that sixth. Come on! Make that A E seven again. So I don't want you to miss this. Little things keep happening by, right? He's in A. Now he makes A seven like this, basically focusing on that root and that C sharp diminished triad. Remember, a diminished triad. What's the point of a diminished triad? Say it with me. To be the three five and flat seven of a dominant triad. That is. That is the main diatonic focus, okay? So this little triad piece, that cluster, he just went A, A, C sharp, E, made it G, C sharp, E, and that gets you over. And what does that want to do? That wants to go to D. So when he does this quick four, that's how he gets there. Little things. I said to us, be my little woman. Love the bass player. He's rocking. He's you know feeling it. The bass and drums are killing it on this. You know I, and the key is just the perfect floor. The perfect floor. It's a seven. So, so we're switching to that quick four, right? So this time we went to the A, and then to make it dominant, slid up into that like Hendrix Red House thing, right? Again, here's A major, it drops back into, that root goes to the flat seven, A goes to G, so you got fifth, flat seven, third. What is this? What is this? What is this? This is that C sharp diminished triad, same as this. But a different inversion. You with me? Here we go. I love that run. Take it down to seven. Bass is pushing it around. Down to seven again.
love that little move. It comes in, focusing on that fifth, batting through the flat three, and then doing that, that, that. I gotta work on my tremolo picking, but basically you got the. Why does this work? He's pushing this triad up here. He could be just doing this double stuff. But even if he's doing this triad, where he's got the, this diminished triad, this A7 you were scoping out before, and he pushed up a minor third to E, why does that work? Well, if you, stay with me, stay with me now. If you expand this to its full diminished form, which means stacked minor thirds. So from any note, you go minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third. You get back to the same note, and it's a four note chord, four note scale. That's like a full diminished thing. So you can take that chord and jump it up a minor third, and it's the same chord, just with a different name. You've heard that sound. So you can do that and just imply it. If you do it in double stops, I mean, you're still getting, you're still getting that kind of, that kind of thing, but you can just hint at it. It's so nice to see players use little unexpected colors and flourishes than to do it whole hog the whole time, right? It's nice to keep it pretty much on the rails and then just every now and again, you're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Just little things. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. I knew he was going to keep that, keep that first inversion and come get A up here. C sharp over A. We have volume knob twist. With the snares, hear the snares. Beautiful. There it is. Okay, that was a great performance. Who sent me this? Bo. All right, Bo, dude. Look, your other one's Brad Paisley. I might have to jump on that Brad Paisley camouflage. Okay, so key takeaways here. Uh, one, four, five, and A. Bam. Overwhelmingly major tonality. What a beautiful song. I'm, I'm not even going to talk about the, the, the original from Otis Redding. Just like, um, I love it. I love this song. This song. Tab, an incredibly sensitive, dynamic singer. And his, his guitar playing really matches his vocals in the sense that there's so much professional restraint and respect for the tune. Uh, and it's totally exhibited in the entire band, too. The keyboards created the perfect floor, the perfect foundation for all of it. It came up and went down, varied between like a like a like a three and a half and like a six, you know, and just like these little waves to bring it all in there. Same thing with the drums and bass. They, they never, they never really broke past that like six and a half level. Um, such restrained professional uh, purposefulness, right? A, a love for the tune. They were locked in. So many times you're watching the bass and drums there, totally smiling at each other because they're each waiting for those little things. I'm telling you. The funk and the hi-hat sizzle, how long the letting the bass ring out before you contract the chord. Can you do that together? That's the real stuff. And Tab, same deal, taking a lead. Major, simple major melodies. Hammering that, that G sharp, which is the third of E, when it goes to the five. Uh, starting in the, in the middle, going low, going high, repeating the same type of motifs but choosing to add a little bit of flourish, a little bit of flourish here and there, a little bit of minor here, that little bit of a diminished run there, just a touch of it, just to tickle your ear. But everybody in the crowd, musician or not, is gonna leave there feeling like they 
they spoke to them on that tune. And that's the goal. Love it. So, Tab, you're the man. Um, forgive me for the rest of the, the names of the rest of the band. I don't know you. People that uh, I don't know your names, drop them in the description. Bo, thanks for being a subscriber on the website, taking my lessons and su- courses, and supporting me in this whole community. Um, and for uploading this video for all you out there. Um, if you'd like to pick some of the next videos, if you're looking for a guitar community or just a music loving community to join in general, I invite you to click the first link in the description. It's called GuitarGate. It's how I make all this possible. Um, and thank you all so much for watching. And if I can leave you with anything, just keep it in your hands. Try to get a little bit better each day. That's what I'm doing. Do it with me. Cheers. That was a good performance.